Hi friends, here you can see the finished bridge I'm going to create. It contains a varying height, varying width, and a transversional slope for the cross section. This video will be epic, so let's get going. I'm now standing in an adaptive Revit template where I've already created the corridor for our bridge consisting of three curves. I've made tutorials on how to import these curves using Excel coordinates and AutoCAD. Check the link in the description for more details. The first two curves represent the left and right sides of the bridge cross section, while the third curve follows the bottom of the bridge. I will open up a new adaptive family template. Here I'm going to design a parametric 2D cross section off our box girder bridge. I will use the front view work plane to place out the reference points that eventually will form our box girder. So I've chosen a straightforward box girder with just one parameter, the thickness T, illustrated in this image. I've kept it really simple to save time and to not make this video too long. Using my trusty Epic pen, let's sketch out our cross section. This will help us highlight the key points and parameters needed to create our masterpiece. The pink points represent our adaptive points when the cross section is loaded into the adaptive family containing the bridge corridors or curves. These adaptive points will connect to the corresponding points on the curves. This allows the cross section to follow the corridor and form the bridge. From the adaptive points there will be hosted reference points marked with a blue dot. This cross section with these three adaptive points will achieve a transversional slope varying in height and width depending on the corridor curves. I will draw up lines between all the points forming a closed loop, which is necessary when creating solid geometry. Our lovely sketch is done. Go to the front view and set the work plane as the front view. I will place three reference points in this view. Select all of them and change them to adaptive points by clicking the Make Adaptive tool in the menu bar. Move to the 3D view where I will continue to place reference points that will be hosted by the adaptive points. But before placing the reference point, I set the work plane on the adaptive point. This will be work plane that will decide the direction the reference point can move. The work plane I just selected determines the desired movement direction for the reference point indicated by the green line representing the set direction. Since this reference point can only move along a single direction defined by the work plane, I can link its offset distance in the properties menu to a parameter. The offset value represents the distance from the hosted adaptive point while the direction is governed by the placement of the work plane very important to pay attention to the selected work plane. I continue to place out our reference points by selecting a work place and hosting them to the adaptive points. Later I will connect the adaptive points to the curves showcased earlier in the video. I have three grooves that determines the corridor of the bridge and three adaptive points that will be connected to the three curves respectively. The error message on the screen can be seen as a reminder that there are two reference points on top of each other. Nothing to worry about, just click OK and move on. So the reference points will follow the placement of the adaptive points with a predetermined offset. Move on to create the parameters by opening up the family types dialog box. Since I want to make this bridge parametric, meaning I would like to be able to change the cross-section geometry of the bridge when inside the Revit main project. I need to create parameters and link them to the reference points. I only need the two parameters for the end user to edit. The thickness and the bottom width of the cross-section, the total width, are already determined by the curves shown earlier. Most of the parameters will be auxiliary parameters or calculated parameters. For example, I need two auxiliary parameters for the bottom width since the two reference points determining the width are offset from the adaptive points. The reference points are half of the total distance of the bottom width from the adaptive points placed in the center, both in a negative direction and a positive, so need a parameter for both. 
back in the 3D view, I select the reference points, find the built-in offset parameter in the properties menu and connect them to the correct parameter just created. You can now observe why I needed a total of three parameters to get the correct bottom width for our cross section. Now over to the really difficult part. Calculate the placement of the two reference points in the center. To help me accomplish that, I need the total width of the cross section, the distance from the edge to the center, and the height distance from the two edges. These dimension lines will be connected to a report parameter. Dimension lines in 3D adaptive families can be tricky because the software is primarily designed for dimensioning in 2D views. Before placing dimensions, ensure you're working on an appropriate work plane. In a 3D adaptive family, dimensions must be aligned to specific reference planes, points or geometry. Open up the parameter dialog box and I will start adding reporting parameters. So reporting parameters are special types of parameters used in families to report or extract specific values from a model's geometry. These parameters are not manually input by the user, but are automatically populated based on the relationship or dimensions of the family components. Reporting parameters are particularly useful for creating parametric families where dimensions or other attributes dynamically update based on changes in geometry. The changes in geometry in our geometry are the total width and distance to the center of the bridge. These values depends on the three curves creating the bridge corridor. The next segment of this video is dedicated to creating two parameters with the calculated distance from the bottom reference points.
now that all the adaptive points and reference points are placed, we'll proceed by selecting two points at a time and connecting them with a line. Repeat this process for all the points until a closed loop is formed. The loop must be closed to create the solid geometry. Once complete, it will resemble the cross section of a box girder. Time for a little flexing. Open up the parameter dialog box and change the thickness parameter to see how our cross section behaves. Looks good. Now let's change the bot width parameter. Yeah, that works just as intended. We will do a quick purge of the family to remove unused objects before loading it into the host family and where the geometry for our bridge will be created. All right, we are now standing in the host family, which is a new adaptive family where I have loaded in the nested cross section box girder family. The three adaptive points in the nested component will be connected to the three different curves. I see I forgot to connect some of the points to form the closed loop back in the nested component and connect them loaded back into the host family and update the cross section back on track. Next. I select the nested component connected to the points on the curve and use the repeat tool and then the remove repeater. I now have the option to create a solid form. And there you have it, a solid bridge that follows the corridor curves. Looks pretty nice. I have both varying thicknesses of the cross section and a transversional slope along the bridge. Load the bridge into the Revit project. Rotate the bridge to see it from different angles. We'll do some flexing of the cross section. Change the bottom width and then the thickness. Both seem to work as intended. Click OK and back in the 3D view. Rotate so I can see it from another angel. Here it's easy to see the varying thickness and the transversional slope with a percent slope that is determined by the corridor curves. Absolutely stunning. And that concludes this tutorial. Be sure to like and subscribe for more fun videos. See you later.